What's up you guys, I'm Austin and today I am back with a question. Did you know that weight gain, diabetes, hypertension, and a host of other diseases and disorders have all been scientifically linked to high amounts of uric acid? This may be your first time hearing about uric acid and that's cool. In today's review, we're going to look at why this matters through some top takeaways from this dope podcast. Then we'll land on tangible ways you can improve your metabolic health by getting a handle on your uric acid level. We've got a lot to cover, so I hope you're excited. <sighs> I'm sorry, man, I had to do it. All right, so before we get into the meat of the podcast, here are my top three moments that had me like <sighs> and gave me a new perspective on this important topic. The first is that the number one causes of death on the earth stem from metabolic issues. The biggies, the number one causes of death on planet earth, not COVID, are the metabolic downstream issues, the chronic degenerative conditions that are beyond epidemic. So I know we talk all the time about how unhealthy the nation has become, but hearing some of the stats out loud really put things into perspective. Research shows that 88% of adults in the United States have at least one component of metabolic syndrome, which is a horde of unfortunate conditions and diseases that make life harder than it should be. Even if you haven't personally felt the sting of this percentage, it almost certainly impacts someone that you care about. This is a part of a global problem where people just aren't able to thrive within the dietary and lifestyle norms of the age. And a slew of chronic degenerative conditions are a big sign that we have a lot of work to do. All right, so my second whoa moment is right here. And we talk about food as the macronutrients of protein, carbohydrates, and fat, and the micronutrients of minerals and vitamins, but we tend to neglect the discussion of food as information. Food is information. What we eat boils down to more than micronutrients and macronutrients. Food serves as a form of communication, telling our bodies about the environment around us. If you take a more primitive look at nutrition, we didn't have access to all the foods all the time. So when we eat things like sugar, even in small amounts, the information is telling us that we should pack on extra pounds. All right, follow me here. The brain then signals the body to become insulin resistant, which helps to facilitate the process of gaining weight. The creation and storage of excess fat is your body's way of building its own little safety suit, prepping for historic times of intense food scarcity. According to Dr. David Perlmutter, even the fructose in a handful of blueberries can trigger these ancient biological mechanisms. That's pretty fascinating, huh? All right, finally, the third whoa moment can be found an hour and 15 minutes into the podcast. Uh, there are some behavioral uh, ideas that are, are changed as well that with the, in the presence of this uh, elevation of the endogenous fructose, that we become more likely to be risk takers. Uric acid can shape our brain and behavior? <laughs> it may sound crazy, but when we consume too much fructose and trigger high amounts of uric acid, we lose some of our inhibitions and indulge in risky behavior. Remember what happened last time you had a little too much of something and engaged in risky behavior? Well, evolutionarily speaking, the risk takers were the ones who found the best food. It was like, get a dish or die trying. You know, a lot of people die trying. But the ones who took the risk and survived their search for sustenance in new environments were rewarded with continued life, health, and the chance to make babies. In many ways still, the very way we experience the world is molded by our dietary decisions. All right, and so those are my top three moments. Now, here are a few things you'll learn about uric acid from this masterclass of a conversation. In episode 116 of the Levels podcast, A Whole New Level, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Casey Means sits down with renowned physician and author Dr. David Perlmutter. The two discuss key factors that link a host of pervasive and chronic health concerns to the amount of uric acid present in your body. So at this point, you're probably like, "I, right, Austin, what the heck is uric acid? Don't worry, I'm one step ahead of you. Basically, uric acid is a chemical that your body makes after breaking down periods. 
Purines are substances found in a lot of the foods that we eat, but mostly in meat. The concentrations are especially high in organ meats like liver and kidney. You probably noticed the similarity between the words uric and urine, and that's because uric acid passes out in your pee. So it's cool that we have a natural way to discard this chemical, but if your body is making too much, you could be in trouble. In the past, uric acid was pretty much only paid attention to when used as an indicator for a condition called gout, a form of inflammatory arthritis where a person's joints become red, swollen, and extremely painful, typically in the feet. But rather than being a mere biomarker of gout, high amounts of uric acid in the blood have more recently been deemed a central player in the nation's metabolic health crisis. Research has found that high levels of uric acid are causing a plethora of pesky problems and chronic health issues that many of us battle every day, like high blood pressure, high blood sugar, insulin resistance, and storing up too much fat. And guess what? That's just the tip of the iceberg. The thing is, uric acid itself isn't the bad guy, and the biological functions it stimulates are actually meant to help our body, just like many of the other functions in our body. I know it's hard to imagine a time before TikTok and Chick-fil-A, but let's think about what the world was like for our evolutionary ancestors in the middle Miocene era. During this period of time, the earth became extremely cold and in lands that were wild, desolate, and wintry, food had to be planted, foraged, or hunted. This took exhaustive amounts of time and effort, which often returned underwhelming results. Only those who could adapt to these conditions were able to make it through. So the ability to store fat, raise blood sugar, and initiate insulin resistance were huge benefits during this period of time. Over time, a process called genetic selection allowed humans to develop a mutation with an enzyme called uricase. This defect worked in their favor, allowing more uric acid to stay within their body. This enabled them to store and make more body fat and maintain higher blood sugar to power the brain and improve their chances of survival. In this context, these metabolic means were the difference between life and death for generations. Fast forward to our current day and age, and I think it's safe to say that we're living in very different times. Research shows that by the year 2030, half of all adults in the United States will be obese. That's just eight years away. The uncomfortable truth is that most of us lead pretty sedentary lifestyles with high calorie, carb crazy meals, calling our names at every opportunity. We're not constantly threatened by starvation or animal predators, but our bodies remain in an inherited survival mode as if the earth is still in an ice cold wasteland. It's not. Many of us simply don't create the opportunities to actually use up that stored fat and stabilize our blood sugar, likely due to overconsumption and abuse of unhealthy foods that are excessively high in sugar. The biological mechanisms that were once key to health are now causing us harm. And this spills into every area of our physiological and even neurological well-being. If we want to rein in these harmful conditions and the effects they have on our bodies, it's absolutely imperative that we get a grip on our uric acid. All right, look, I know this is a lot of information and you're probably wondering, how can I really apply any of this information to my life? Well, there are a few simple action steps that you can take to move forward after learning all this information. First, you can check your uric acid level. If you're curious about the ways uric acid is affecting your body, it's easy to get your levels checked. You can do this at home with your own kit and a prick of blood, or you can get with your doctor to get the result. Just be sure not to check while fasted or during a vigorous workout. Your readings are gonna be off. Now, many physicians will tell you not to worry about uric acid if you don't have gout, but don't be led astray. It's important to ensure that your levels are below five to five and a half to experience optimal range. Though many circles consider a level of seven to be normal, studies have shown that a uric acid reading of seven or higher leads to a 16% increase in risk of all-cause death, a 32% increased risk of dying from stroke, and a 38% increased risk of cardiovascular death, which basically means a higher chance of dying from pretty much everything. Knowledge is power, and in this case, a little bit of information about your uric acid level will go a long way in building a better you and prolonging the good years of your life. The second thing you can do is clean up your diet. Eating for metabolic stability absolutely matters. You've probably heard me say it a million times, but let's count this as a million and one. You got to cut the sugar. High fructose corn syrup especially is one of the worst ways to sweeten your diet, but it's in the majority of foods on our grocery store shelves. 
While our ancestors may have enjoyed whole food forms of fructose through the occasional fibrous piece of fruit, nowadays our sugar is mostly processed. Let's take it a step further. Even the kind of alcohol you're drinking matters. For example, women who drink wine actually have lower uric acid levels than those who abstain. This effect isn't really seen in men. Sorry, fellas. Beer, on the other hand, is loaded with purines from brewer's yeast which makes your body increase uric acid to do the job of breaking those purines down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, signals the birth of the infamous beer belly. Sorry, fellas. Eat and drink with intention and always keep your health goals in front of mind. If you're having a hard time controlling your diet, I get it. You can help fill in the gaps with your nutrition with appropriate supplemental quercetin and vitamin C, which has been proven to lower uric acid levels over time. Another thing you can do, get moving. It's summer somewhere in the world and you might find yourself scrambling to get your beach body together. I'm cool with that. Just please keep in mind that working out is about more than achieving aesthetic goals or showing how much you can lift. Exercise encourages your body to burn up extra fat for energy and it helps keep your blood sugar stable, which in turn keeps your uric acid from going into hyperdrive. So get up and move your body, not just to look good, but to feel good as well. All right, so there you have it the good, the bad, and the ugly of uric acid from some of the top medical professionals in the game and my personal favorite. You guys already know I'm a huge nerd when it comes to all things metabolism, so I really found this episode to be eye-opening. An excess of uric acid is like a flare going off in your body and it's too important to ignore. There's always more to learn, so if you're interested in diving deeper into this topic, check out the full podcast episode on YouTube or your preferred listening app. What surprised you about uric acid? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more dope content and condensed podcast reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.